On this episode of Doing the Most, we're talking about 10 more homebrewing hacks that you need to know. Moment brews and various art tools, everything from meat to roast. Big creation, fermentation, and ebriation, doing the most. If you haven't caught our first top 10 homebrewing hacks video, check that out. I'm going to put a link right up here and a link in the description. I feel like it's a pretty good primer on some interesting techniques and tactics that you can use to improve your home brewing. But in this episode, we're dishing out 10 more hacks you can use in your brew space. Number one, clips in your brew space. Talking about these little dudes, and they're basically like chip clips. You can use them to hold onto your wrecking cane, tubing, bottling wand. You may have seen me do that in a previous video, and they just turn out to be super handy, so I always keep them around. Heck, you can even use these to hold cheesecloth in a strainer while you're straining something out. There are a lot of things that will become a lot easier in your brew space when you have some clips on hand. Buy a bunch of them. They're cheap, they don't wear out. Number two, Look for 100% juice. Now I can't say that this one applies worldwide, but at least here in the States, if you see 100% juice on the label, you can be pretty darn sure that it's 100% juice. And what that means is there aren't chemical stabilizers or preservatives added, there isn't corn syrup or additional sugar added, and it's 100% juice. Now that could mean that you have grape juice that's labeled 100% juice, but it's actually 100% apple juice and grape juice mixed together. But what you can typically be certain of is if it says 100% juice, that's exactly what it is. And again, this is mostly helpful because it doesn't have preservatives in it, meaning there's nothing in there that's gonna encumber your yeast from fermenting. And a bonus tip for those of you who are Instacarting a lot, particularly during this pandemic situation, you can get those little cans of juice concentrate in the freezer section, Instacarted, and it's basically the same thing. You just have to dilute it with water. Why is this a bonus tip? because it will save you on that heavy cart fee that you get on Instacart. Number three, polycarbonate hydrometers exist. I know what you're thinking. I already have a hydrometer. Well, so did I. And then I got another one and then replaced that one. And then I got another one and replaced that one because hydrometers are made of glass and they're incredibly fragile. And every now and then you've got some stars and covered slippery hands and it drops out and shatters. And you will find those little beads that are at the bottom around your house forever. It's great. Enter the polycarbonate hydrometer. It's virtually indestructible. You can bang it around, ain't gonna hurt it. And uh, that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all there is to say. It's like the same price as a regular hydrometer at most places, so why wouldn't you switch to one of these? Number four, tinctures for control. Now, I'm mostly talking about herbs and spices. So if you're trying to add an herbal flavor to a beer or a spiced flavor to a meat or wine, it's always nice to be able to have a level of control. So what do you do? Crush up your spices, soak them in some grain alcohol or vodka, and leave them in the mason jar for a few weeks to create a flavored alcohol. It's a tincture, just like vanilla extract. Then you can add that tincture bit by bit to your brew until you like the flavor. Save your spices, save your herbs for secondary, and use a tincture. You get great control out of it. Side benefit, it's a flavor you created yourself, not something you bought at the store. So, pride. Number five, water jug weighing. I use a lot of spring water in my brewing because in Oklahoma City we have fairly hard water and it's fairly easy to buy a few jugs of water anytime I'm brewing something. Obviously then a lot of those end up in the recycling bin, but there is a little way that you can reuse them before they hit the recycling bin. If you cut off the top while leaving the handle, you can use them to weigh things on a scale, particularly things that may be difficult to weigh otherwise. You may have seen us do this in the past on the channel where we weighed out honey by using this technique. It's handy, it's simple, and you get one more use out of the jug. Number six, Kivaik yeast for flexibility. You may have seen our videos using Kivaik yeast or talking about how it's great for making mead, but why would you use Kivaik yeast in your brew? Well, the answer is simple, clout. <laughs> I'm kidding, kind of. Kivaik is trendy right now. But it's great because you don't have to super worry about temperature control when you're brewing. Kivaik does some fun things at higher temperatures. It's really amenable to washing and drying, and we've got a video on that. And most strains flocculate really well, so they form a nice firm yeast cake at the bottom. And lastly, clout. Number seven, jam for fruiting. I'm talking about jam. 
little jars of jam. It's sterilized, it's sweet, and it makes available to you a lot of fruits that might not be local to your region. For instance, if you add it to a mead or a wine that you've stabilized, it's gonna bring some back sweetening and it's gonna bring a holistic fruitiness in a way that you wouldn't get fruitiness from something that rode through primary or secondary fermentation. And jam goes on sale at the grocery store literally all the time. And just make sure it doesn't have anything you may not want, like preservatives or high fructose corn syrup. Number eight, always check the clearance section. This one probably seems kind of odd, and what I'm talking about is the clearance section at your local homebrew store or online when you're buying homebrewing supplies. Because sometimes you'll find some interesting stuff there. Homebrew shops typically sell things for more than just mead, beer, wine, and cider. Sometimes they sell cheese making stuff. Recently, I was buying some homebrewing supplies and needed just a little bit more in my cart to get free shipping. While checking the clearance section, I found a cheese press for $15 that would have typically been 50 or 60 bucks. So check the clearance section. You never know what you're gonna find. And sometimes there are some hidden gems. Number nine, OxyClean for removing bottle labels. Now, I know that everybody has their way they like to remove labels from bottles. I prefer OxyClean, and particularly I prefer the unscented version of OxyClean. It typically takes labels right off with a good soak of four to six hours. Just throw them all in the bathtub, pour in some OxyClean, fill it up with water, and let it ride. Usually, the labels and their gunk will slide right off. If they don't, that bottle belongs in your recycling bin. Just don't fuss with it if it's gonna consume too much of your time. And finally, number 10, bottle on top of your dishwasher door. This is a hack that I saw very early on in my home brewing experience. I came across a picture of some bottles all lined up on the dishwasher door, and it struck me as so incredibly brilliant because sometimes there's splashes and spills while you're bottling, and all of that just goes into the dishwasher when you close the door. Now, granted, you can't cap on the dishwasher door, so don't do that part. And hey, bonus tip if you've got a nice dishwasher. If you're good about cleaning out your bottles whenever you're done drinking a homebrew and they're basically clean and ready to go, run them through the sanitize cycle on your dishwasher. It'll pump them full of hot water, it'll get them to a really high heat, and then you don't have to worry about sanitizing them. Bring them right out of the dishwasher onto the door and bottle away. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, hit that thumbs up to let us know. And if you'd like to stick around for more content like this, make sure you hit that subscribe button down there. Until next time, happy brewing. Hi, thanks for following the Doing the Most YouTube channel. And thank you so much for subscribing because I know you totally have hit that subscribe button by now. If you'd like to follow our channel on social media, that's Doing the Most Okay. And you can also support the channel by becoming a patron or a YouTube member. Again, thank you for subscribing. We'll see you next time.